So I'm at the uh, Venetian, I'm in the uh, section where we've got accessories and also a lot of wireless uh, power technologies and I'm with Caesar Johnston, CEO of Energis. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Alex. Well, welcome to our booth. It's thank a pleasure uh, to have you here. Now, uh, tell us what uh, Energis does. We, we are a fabulous semiconductor company mm -hmm. and we develop a specific technologies to be able to send radio frequency power over the air. Yep. In other words, electricity over the air. Yeah. Being able to remove wires and being able to, over time, remove batteries. And being able to create a network that will specifically send power similar to how today you use cellular technologies or, or Wi-Fi wi technologies. Yeah. And, you, and, and you've had a big uh, history in Wi-Fi. Yes, uh, my background is effectively in wireless communications. I've been doing that for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. I ran the Broadcom teams for Wi-Fi. In the early days, we introduced MIMO as a concept, which yeah. was a big deal back then, first yeah. chip. Worked with many, many multiple uh, customers, including Apple and Dell and HP at the time. Mm -hmm. I left the company, went to Marvell Semiconductors, mm -hmm. uh, worked for the founder of the company and ran all the wireless connectivity division that developed Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, and FM. And that's all the wireless communications, which is really, it's been around for over 120, 130 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. And wireless power has been around for about the same time. Yeah. But if you look at how technologies have evolved, mm. there's a big gap there and a big discrepancy, yeah. right? I, I mean, mean, Nikola Tesla was supposed to have developed wireless power or the concept for it and never commercialized it. And here we are in 2022. <laughs> and uh, But finally, we're seeing some real advancements in this space. I mean, so, uh, Samsung just announced that its remote control could be recharged by uh, RF signals from your router. But what are you guys doing? What are you doing in 2022? That's, uh, thanks for asking. So, so Tesla is, is the father of uh, wireless technology. Mm. Uh, definitely, he, he was the first one to show the feasibility and the capability. Yeah, and we're of, talking, uh, of course, for those who don't know, Nikola Tesla, yeah. not Elon Musk. Not <laughs> Elon Musk, exactly. Not the Tesla cars, but yeah, the, original, yeah. the original the original Tesla, yeah. that is. And, yeah. and what he did is he used magnetic waves mm -hmm. to, to be able to send power. As opposed to what he did, we, we used radio frequency waves, similar mm -hmm. to communication networks, to be able to send power. And, okay. and so... I've heard uh, in the past few years lots of talk about phones being able to be charged over the air. Motorola and Lenovo and mm -hmm. Xiaomi last year showed some demos, but they were just sort of prototypes. How far away are we from being able to buy a... How many years before we can buy a device that can charge our phone as we walk around the house and don't have to think about putting it onto a plate? Okay, so let me uh, slice the question in two parts. Please. Okay? So the first thing is whether the technology can do it or not. Mm -hmm. And there's no limitation on technology today yep. to be able to send enough power, to be able to receive enough power to charge a phone. In mm -hmm. fact, at Energis, we demonstrated that back in 2015, wow. where we charge a, a, a phone at 15 feet at one watt of receive power, mm -hmm. which is really a tremendous amount of power. Yeah. The problem that we have- But is it safe have, for the human body? Exactly, that's, right. that's the that's key, the question. right? <laughs> the key is, number one, is it safe? Yeah. But number two, will you be able to go to a government office and yeah. be able to get a certification? Yeah. And the reality of things is that if, even if you look at communication networks today, they have limitations in the amount of power. Mm. And those limitations on the communication networks are because receivers in a communication network can use power to receive very, very low levels of signals. Mm -hmm. But the problem with wireless transmission and reception is that you should not be using any power to receive power. Yeah. You should be able to receive the power that's being sent by the transmitter. That's right. And at that point in time, the levels of power that you receive are low, and therefore you need to come up with a technique by, to be able to actually effectively recharge devices. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And, and when you do that, you might think that you can use communication technologies to be able to do uh, wireless power transfer, the reality is that that's not correct. You have to actually create the technologies to be able to do that. Now, as far as the, the, whether it's safe or not, there are rules that you need to follow. And most important at energy is that we've been able to show that it is possible to send power at unlimited distances by constraining the transmitter power mm -hmm. and by using the concept of uh, absorption rate. Yep. And in, in, uh, fundamentally, the amount of uh, our uh, radiation mm -hmm. that the human body can actually withstand. And what we have found is, is that it is possible to do so, and it is possible to actually be better than your phone. In fact, your phone is more likely to generate more power as you communicate to your cellular 
tower than some of the transmitters that we've developed at uh, Energis. So okay. you've got some of the uh, chipsets here. You want to take us briefly through yeah, some of these? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So as, as we, I said before, we develop chipsets, mm -hmm. but because we have a new technology, we develop also the whole system as mm -hmm. a reference design for our customers. Yep. Uh, we use two types of technologies. The, the, the beauty of uh, developing chipsets for uh, RF power technologies is the fact that we can piggyback on all the efforts that we've done over the multiple years developing RF technologies for communications. And as yeah. I said before, they're not the same, but we can use the same tools and the same uh, fabrication techniques. Yeah. So in our particular case, what we've done is we've created transmitters and mm -hmm. receivers. Mm -hmm. Our transmitters have the capability of doing CPU processing to, to manage if, mm -hmm. uh, the control of, of, the, the, smart of the system. Power. Smart power. The, the smart power, <laughs> definitely. Uh, and we use a, an IP. Yeah. from, in this case, a uh, well-known company out there, mm -hmm. which is very generic in the industry. Yeah. And you generate, uh, in our case, uh, let's say 900 megahertz, okay, because people can send power di with different frequencies, and mm -hmm. there's a particular reason why we pick 900 megahertz as a sweet spot. Yeah. And then what you do is, if I can show you here, uh, these are our line of the zoom devices. Right in there. Yeah. Uh, this is our transmitter line, mm -hmm. this is our receiver line. Mm -hmm. And what you have here, is you have a CPU-based 4100 device. That's where we run all of our control software for power control. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a power amplifier, very similar to what is used in the case of Wi-Fi or other technologies. Mm -hmm. They don't have the same linearity requirements. They're much higher efficiency because it is important to be efficient to send power. Just to give you an example, a CMOS uh, PA can be in the order of up to 50% efficient. Mm -hmm. A communication uh, PA is in the order of around 20% efficient. And that's important because 30% of that power gets dissipated in heat. So we actually convert that into power. So that's one very, very clear difference of why communication devices should not be used for wireless power. We also use uh, gallium uh, nitrate GAN technologies mm -hmm. for much higher output power, all the way up to 20 watts of power. This is the, our, our module, and we have a little, little tiny CMOS-based device that allows you to control that uh, power amplifier. So by combining the transmitter with different PAs, power amplifiers, you can create multiple configurations of uh, multiple levels of transmission. Okay. Then what you have is receivers. These are rectification receivers. You take AC power, convert that to DC. You take DC, feed these devices, you send that RF power with antennas over the air that those uh, signals are gathered with other receive antennas, go into rectification, and then you get DC uh, power back. And then the, the, the front end of those devices is very similar to what is used today when you have either wires or other technologies that allow you to get power. Okay, so that's what we've developed so far. Yep. Uh, some examples of using these technologies, this, this is a one watt transmitter. What you have here is a BLE chip, uh, which is your communication uh, interface. And then what you have is a transmitter chip with a PA. Uh, it's bigger than it should be, but it's a good example of a, a transmitter. And I'll show you later what those transmitters look like and what they can do. Sure. Uh, just as another example of antennas. Uh, th these are patch antennas. Mm -hmm. This is the type of antenna that we designed specifically for wireless power transfer. Uh, there are other antennas, let's say, for the receivers. There are, there are me meandering type of antennas. And depending on the application and the level of power and the size of the devices, we have to play with the antennas yeah. to be able to fit them into our technology. Chassis, yeah. That's right. So we develop those technologies, and effectively, we take these chips, build the boards, build the, ant build the antennas, and we also have reference designs that we can show you uh, as we go through this table. Sure. They do different things. Okay. okay. So one example, and this is where the confusion comes on when people talk about wireless transmission. Uh, wireless means no wires, mm. but wireless ne doesn't necessarily mean, in the case of power, distance. Yeah. Okay. So what we have is we have contact power, mm -hmm. and that contact power is very similar to magnetic power, so we yeah. compete with Qi, but RF is the, the technology that can also do that. So we use, uh, we take the advantage of RF on smaller devices like hearables, yeah. you can tell here, and that's, those are your receivers that use the chips that I mentioned before, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the transmitter, 
that uses a very similar chip and, and, bo and board that I show you. Uh, this is a, these are applications on, on hearables. And coils have a hard time and they're very expensive for this type of application. Uh, RF, it's pretty straightforward and it actually accommodates because we can reshape the antenna. We have here as another example a, a horse sensor. It, it senses the temperature and of, of the animal. I mean, there's four of them, one on each leg. And these are all contact technologies. Uh, we have other sensors for human for, for the back. This is the GoClay product. Uh, we have a number of plaques in here that show you the level of certification that we have achieved. So going back to what you were saying, it's not just whether it's safe or not, but whether each country will be able to certify. Mm. So today at one watt, we have no limit on distance. We're certifying the US, we're certifying in Europe, we are certified in India. Uh, we know how to get certified in Australia. Mm -hmm. We've already looked into that. Yeah. And, and you're gonna see this technology for uh, near field. And as we move along here, mm -hmm. uh, we can show you, for instance, what we call mid field. So you have a very simple transmitter, call it some something you can integrate on a speaker and start sending power and you can start charging your your smart wearables, glasses, your, your smart your wearables, glasses, yeah, yeah. or maybe your hearing aids could be in a little box like that. You can put it in front of it and so on. And this is all safe, by the way, mm -hmm. once more. Yeah. And it's all certified. And this is up to one, one meter. And the beauty of this technology is that we can do contact, we can do short distance, and effectively over time, what you see on the left-hand side here is long distance. Yeah. And in long distance, you see a transmitter. Yeah. Up oh, there, zoom in on that, yeah. yeah uses, that's, that's a one watt transmitter, the, mm -hmm. the round one. Yeah, that uses the same board I showed you before with the same chips mm -hmm. and some specific uh, antenna that is uh, uh, polarized. Yeah, uh, there is the five watt transmitter, a much bigger transmitter mm -hmm. that, yeah. that we have. Mm -hmm. So, depending on the application, and you can go and deploy this in your room. Very safe, by the way. There's, these are all safe, mm -hmm. and it's safer than your phone. Yeah. Okay. Incredible, incredible. And now what you're doing is you're sending power over the air. This whole area is, is powered yeah. with RF signals. And you have devices such as uh, electronic shelf labels that, be, that have become now very popular mm. out there. I've seen them in various stores, yeah. Exactly. Which I just always imagine they were plugged in or charged or something. They use batteries were, today, yeah. but we can get rid of all those batteries. We can use super, uh, super caps mm -hmm. and we can use our transmitters and power them. Uh, safely and in a sustainable and, manner. And wirelessly. And wirelessly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then we have, and this is the interesting one, we have a partnership with another company called Williot that have developed very smart uh, I, uh, IDs uh, that are RFID equivalent devices mm -hmm. that actually have a very, very smart chip in it based on, on BLE. And what we do is this actually don't use any batteries. And imagine thousands of these at the store, let's say uh, some floating store, some retail store, and you being able to find out where things are at a given time. People moving this to the so it's for, it's for finding the items uh, in store and doing instant stock instant takes, stock but also types. it's also for loss prevention. Loss prevention too, and imagine you go to the fitting room and they know who you are and they know what you're trying. And how and many products you have, and if someone's have. trying to hide one somewhere, exactly. they know. Yeah, yeah. and if, yeah. if they want to sell it to you, they might send you a little coupon on your phone and say, if you buy this now, you get, I don't know, 10% discount. Yeah, yeah, so things yeah. are getting smarter. And uh, in fact, if you walk out the store with it, they will uh, charge you automatically as well on your too. card, if you're already a member. If you're already, you're already a member of that, that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we are also looking at uh, a company called Sintian. We're looking at artificial intelligent devices so as you go and deploy these networks with those transmitters, uh, the amount of devices that you're going to have in a given place is huge. I mean, mm -hmm. it can be in the thousands. Mm -hmm. And the amount of traffic that you create now is so high mm -hmm. that today's Wi-Fi or infrastructure will basically be, will be obliterated by the amount of data. So, uh, and the same thing happens when you go into the cloud. So what you want to do today with the cloud is you want to offload the cloud. And you offload the cloud by putting, putting the smarts into, into the edge, yeah. so this is uh, AI edge processing. Mm -hmm. You can gather all this information, collect it in, into your, call it a smart AI-based uh, device, yeah. send that to your transmitter, mm -hmm. and you can have the same concept as if in communication networks, call it small cells, and then gather all that, concentrate that, and then send that to your to your Wi-Fi, back there, back, your Wi-Fi, uh, access points. 
And I can see down here that we've got the units showing the actual prices. That's correct. In, 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 in real time. In real time, real yes. Real time updates, yeah. And at some point in time, I mean, I, I, I believe people will go there, they'll know who you are and they might even give you a better price. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all going to be automatic. Now, the reality is that because we're doing all this, we're going to have so many interconnected devices, so mm. many IoT devices, that the amount of uh, devices that you have out there is way much more of, of the number of phones that you have today. Yeah, so uh, this oh, is it's, much it'll higher. be trillions. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much what we do as a company. We have created the technology to be able to do that. We are opening up different markets, as mm -hmm. you see, electric, electronic shelves, uh, labels, mm -hmm. uh, fitness bands, uh, I mean, some people might think age. RFID is, uh, uh, you know, advanced, but it's been around for many years now. Hasn't That's it? correct. A RFID of has been around for a long time. It I mean, was this, not straightforward. This, this is the next generation that sort of goes above That's and beyond. That's correct. Yeah. What you're seeing in this room today is the next generation of how the world is going to look like in the mm -hmm. next ten years. Yeah. Where and what you see here is the first interoperability of devices, not designed by Energis, will you? A different company. Yeah. As here with EPs, another partner that we have and many other different types of devices that will benefit from the, from the same power transmitter. Yeah. So we have inter interoperability by default, which by the way, Wi-Fi could not do. Yeah. So that's what we have today. So we have the beginning of a new era. And if I talk about that transmitter today, that's how transmitters in the future will look like. Communication yeah. transmitters will need the, the, the power uh, transmission technology as well as the communication technology. Yeah. That's, that's the future. We'll or it's, and it's here today at Energy. It's here, that's it. And that's it, yes. Well, Cesar Johnson, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing what you do over the next year and uh, seeing you again in 2023. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very See much. See you and thank you for stopping by and hello in Australia and wherever you're going to take me with your video. Everywhere, around okay, the world. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, bye. <laughs>